Hello brothers and sisters of Christ. I thought I'd come out here and see if I can do a video by the ocean side. <laughs> do a study real quick. So the study that we're going to be talking about today is holding on to anger. Okay. Turn to Matthew 5, 22. Remember, I'm a King James Bible believer. Make sure you have your King James Bibles out and you're following along. Uh, I'm out here. Anybody could come around. So I'm just going to go off my notes and we're going to read scripture. But you can open your Bibles and follow along. Right? Matthew 5.22 But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother Raka shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say thou fool shall be in danger of hellfire. Okay? We preach all the time that you can be angry with a cause. Not without a cause, with a cause. Right? But we never preach that you're not supposed to hold on to that anger. We never explain to you, what do you do with that anger? Uh -huh. What happens when you hold on to that anger? You can be angry with a cause. Okay? But you're not supposed to hold on to that anger. Let's turn to Ephesians 4.24. Okay? And that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speaking every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Verse 26, be angry and sin not. Okay? If you can be angry with a cause, but don't let that anger turn into sin. And we'll talk about what anger can turn into. Okay? And sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. When you're looking at this lost world, there's nothing wrong with being angry at how much this world has is, is rejected Jesus Christ, rejected His perfect written word. You have wolves in sheep's clothing. You have all these false converts that are setting a bad example of what a real Christian is, a Bible-believing, God-fearing man and woman is. You have all these false converts. You see the vexation of this world, and you can get angry how bad this world rejects Jesus Christ, how this world treats His perfect written word. As the world treats the body of Christ, there's nothing wrong with getting angry, but sin not. Okay? Someone can wrong you, and you are angry with the cause. Be angry, but sin not. Okay? Verse 28 Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the things which are good, and that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Verse 30, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. This is addressed to save sinners, just as this te teaching is addressed to save sinners. Okay, The main point of this teaching is, is, do you hold on to anger when someone repents? That was the biggest thing about this. Is when someone comes and repents, a brother in Christ comes and repents. Do you hold on to anger? Okay. Can you be angry with the cause as a Christian? Yes, you can. But right here we hit verse 30. Now we're going to start talking about how you treat one another, the brethren. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. When God saves you, your destination is fixed. Okay. Don't let anybody take that from you. When God saves you, not when you're saving yourself, when God saves you. Okay. One of the reasons, ways you can grieve the Holy Spirit is if you keep doubting your salvation all the time. That is there. But we're going to get into some things that really grieve the Holy Spirit. Verse 31. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you. Who's the you? With all malice. Who's the you? Well, if we keep reading, which we will, it's talking about Christians. Okay. You know what really grieves the Holy Spirit? When you have bitterness towards one another. They have the Holy Spirit in them. You have the Holy Spirit in you. And you're being bitter towards one another. When you have wrath towards one another. When you have anger with the cause, yes. But when that anger... As we're going to talk to, anger can lead to bitterness. Anger can lead to wrath. Anger that's righteous, that you're good, you can have that anger because you have a cause. 
But what happens when you hold on to that anger? That anger is going to lead to even more anger. And that's not good. Okay? That anger can lead to clamor. It can lead to evil speaking. But we're to put it away. There comes a point in time, brothers and sisters Christ, where you've got to put it away. It's not worth it. Okay? Verse 32, And be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. There we see it again. It's addressing saved sinners. God has not for, Jesus Christ has not forgiven somebody who is a Christ-rejecting sinner. They reject Christ. They refuse to repent. They refuse to understand. They have the head knowledge, belief. But they refuse to understand the gospel. They refuse to confess both in prayer. They refuse to ask God to save them. God did not forgive them of their sins. Okay. But if you come to Him, He will. I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Okay. But I want to talk about these things. What happens when you hold on to anger? Anger can turn to bitterness. Your anger can come out in wrath and how you treat people. Okay. Anger can be get even more angry. There's times where you get angry with a cause at one thing and you start getting angry at everything. You just get angry. Why? Because when you are angry with the cause, there comes a point where you got to give that anger to the Lord. You give that situation to the Lord and the Lord will deal with it. All right. But let's talk about the first one, bitterness. We're just going to touch on these just a little bit because I've already done a big study if you want to go look at it. Bitterness part one and two. The sin of bitterness. All right. But bitterness, Proverbs 14.10. This is one of the big warnings I wanted to give you, brethren. When you get bitterness in your heart, it hurts you. Your life, you did, the joy's not there. The peace isn't there. Okay. Your walk with the Lord suffers. Your fellowship with the brethren suffers. Okay. But what happens when God gets that bitterness out of your life? Pro remember, turn to Proverbs 14.10. You get joy and peace. Things start. God starts putting things back together. Your walk with Him. He starts putting back your fellowship with the brethren back together. Your life, the joy starts coming back. The peace starts coming back. But what happens when someone comes in to take that away? Let's read this. Proverbs 14.10 The heart knoweth his own bitterness, and a stranger doth not intermeddle with his joy. Doesn't intermeddle with his joy. What does that mean? Intermeddle means to meddle in the affairs of others in which one has no concern. They're not concerned for you. They don't care about you. They're just meddling to meddle, to cause problems. To meddle officiously, to interpose or interfere improperly. Okay. Proverbs 51 says, A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. You can have, you can have bitterness in your heart that comes from anger, and God gets that bitterness out, you've given that anger to the Lord, and someone can come in and start trying to stir up that anger again. Someone can come in and start stirring up that trouble. Okay? I'm speaking from experience. I've been one of those people that have had people stir up the anger in me, and I've been one of those people that was bitter and just whined and complained, and I would stir up that anger and bitterness in other people. There's a point where you guys say, Lord, I give it to you. Whatever happens, if someone wronged you, I give it to the Lord. If you're angry about the world, Lord, deal with them. The Lord will deal with them. I trust the Lord. He knows what He's doing. He's got everything under control. Okay? But the warning with bitterness is when it comes in, God can get it out of your life, and you let Him. You have to be subjection to God and His perfect Word to get it out of your life. But there's people that will come along to try to grab it and drag it back in. They'll try to get you to get back into that anger, get you back into that bitterness that anger can lead to. Okay. you got to learn to let it go. And don't let people bring you back under it. I failed this. Okay, I hurt some brethren by me arguing and complaining and whining about stuff that I was angry with the cause. Absolutely. But there's a point where you got to stop whining. I'll use the word whining and complaining because <laughs> at first it's discussing with the Lord or with brethren. But if that's all you do and you find yourself just talking about the same things that you're always angry with, it's becoming bitterness. 
And what's that do? That gets them to be a little negative and gets them to do the same thing. And you're not supposed to do that. And I failed that and I had to apologize to some of the brethren. Okay. What about wrath? Okay. Turn to Romans 12, 19. Anger can lead to wrath. You're really going off on somebody. Physically, verbally. Okay. Romans 12, 19. Some people make videos out of revenge because they're wrath. They're trying to pour out their wrath because they make videos. <laughs> I've seen that. Romans 12, 19. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give, rather give place unto wrath. Avenge not yourself, but give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Okay? You want to get even. You want to fix things. You want things to be right. There's sometimes where you can't make it right. You got to just give it to the Lord. The Lord will deal with it. The Lord will take care of it. I'm having a lot of attacks on this ministry that God has blessed me with when it comes to repentance. I'm getting attacked by lost people left and right. Um, I'm getting attacked, you know, and it's like there comes a point where you guys say, Lord, I let them deal, you deal with them. Take care of them, Lord. I trust you. You know what you're doing. You take care of them. Okay? You give it to the Lord. It becomes sin when you want to purposely go out there and get vengeance and make things equal and they need to get theirs. No, you give it to the Lord. The Lord will deal with it. And one thing I did not put in here. Well, let's keep going on wrath and then we'll talk about it. Proverbs 14, 29. Turn to Proverbs 14, 29. He that is slow to wrath is of a great understanding, but he that is hasty of spirit exalteth folly. Yeah. You need to be slow to wrath. You need to be where you don't lose your temper. You're not supposed to be quick to lose your temper. Be so quick to get angry. It should take a little bit to get you angry. Mm -hmm. And then when you do get angry, make sure you have a cause. Proverbs 30, 33. Surely the churning of milk bringeth forth butter, and the wringing of the nose bringeth forth blood. Passing. In other words, someone hits you in the nose, it's going to bring forth blood. Mm -hmm. Granted, they have to hit you hard enough. So the forcing of wrath bringeth forth strife. When you're trying to force something, you're going to cause strife. That's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. But with wrath, brother and sister Christ, when you give it to God, uh, when you give it to God, that wrath, <laughs> water's coming up. When you give that wrath to God and say, Lord, you deal with them, when God does deal with them, there's, I forgot where it's at, I didn't put it in my notes, but in the Old Testament, it talks about wrath. Okay, uh, that when somebody's going through chastening of the Lord or the wrath of the Lord, like when something bad is happening to somebody, you're not to rejoice in it. You're not to mock it because then the Lord will turn his wrath from that person. And you really don't want that. Okay? If you want God to deal with them, like these enemies of the ministry, if you want God to keep them occupied and everything, when you see that bad things are happening to them, you don't make videos jumping up and saying, praise the Lord, and, and mocking them, and calling them names, and just taking great joy in their displeasure. And if I can find the verse, I'll put it on the video. I just can't remember off the top of my head. Okay. Another thing that we get Another thing that we get is um, anger. We came across it. What does anger do? Anger can lead to more anger. You can be angry with a cause, but when that cause is taken, are you supposed to still be angry? Some people get angry, and then they love that. They just love to be angry. So the anger just begets more anger, which begets more anger, which begets more anger. Okay. Proverbs fourteen seventeen. He that is soon angry delayeth foolishly, and a man of wicked devices is hated. What does that mean? When you get angry, there's times that you can act in a way that you look back and say, that was foolish, that was dumb of me. I got angry and I acted before I thought, because you're based off, your actions are based off of anger, and they're not based off of your heart and your head. It's just based off of anger. Mm -hmm. 
So anger can forget more anger. You know who the number one person I'm always angry with mostly in my life as a Christian? This guy right here. Right? I make a lot of mistakes in my life. Uh, and I've had to, to suffer through things because I have made a lot of mistakes in my life. I failed the Lord. There's times where I fail the brethren and I make mistakes. And the number one person I'm usually always angry with is myself. Mm -hmm. Making bad choices in life. Proverbs 21, 19. It is better to dwell in the wilderness than with a contentious and an angry woman. Yeah. Okay. It's not necessarily the woman part. I'm saying yeah in the sense that you get around people that are just angry all the time. Your heart is going to be like, I don't want to be around them. I'd rather be in the wilderness. If you find out that people don't want to be around you, maybe one of the reasons is is because they see that you're just an angry person and you're just angry all the time. Once again, I'm guilty of this. I go through periods where I start fr getting frustrated with the world, uh, with, some, with me, with my mistakes that I've made, um, with some of the brethren, and I go on a rant. Well, sometimes a brethren will be nice and kind and sit there and listen to it, but if that's all you're doing, they're not really going to want to be around you that much. Right? If all you are is anger, and that angry is, leads to bitterness and, and wrath and clamor, we'll get to that one, clamor is yelling, you know, and uh, evil speaking, they're not going to really want to be around you that much. Mm -hmm. Turn to Proverbs 22, 24. It says, Make no friendship with an angry man, and with a furious man thou shalt not go. There it goes again. When you see somebody just it's just angry and they're bitter and they're just complaining and whining and just all the time, the Bible says it's better not to be a friend with that person. It's just better not to be a friend with that person. And I can understand when I got into those areas where I start acting like that, that you know people didn't want to be around me. When I was trying to fellowship with some of the brethren, I had a brethren correct me and he was right according to scripture. And I had to change. Okay, it doesn't mean you can't be a friends with a man who makes mistakes and does get angry. This is talking about a man that his his whole thing is just angry all the time. No matter what you tell him, and try to say, "Hey, man, give it to the Lord, move on, give it to the Lord, move on." There's people who make videos left and right against King James Video Ministries. What is it? They have a lot of anger, a lot of bitterness, a lot of hate. Okay, all these things, wrath that we're going through, they have it, and you think they had to let him go of it. And get back to if they're truly saved, they get back to just serving the Lord. There's people that attack my ministry to do the same thing. It's like, okay, you made your video, move on. Okay. But when you get those people like that, that's just hardcore, just they just love to be angry, they love to fight. Uh, you don't make friends with them. That's why a lot of us, brothers and sisters, Christ, as kind as we can be, there's people that get on there and say, hey, uh, like the people that we. We say people who follow Edward P.F., okay, King's Table, and uh, some of those other people out there. Uh, I say for Robert Breakers because he's lost, but when it comes to King's Table and Bat Max Bauer and Edward P.F. and you know uh, Edward Finninger, I think it is Finninger, if I can say his name right. All those people out there, their their sites, their YouTube channels are based off of hate. They just want to attack, 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 and that's all they do is they attack everybody. I mean, they attack everybody, <laughs> you know? They're just, what is it? They're just full of hate, of anger. And the Bible says, make no friendship with an angry man. Even if you believe they're saved, which I don't believe they're saved for one second, according to Scripture, but even if you believe they're saved, you're still not to have anything to do with them. They're just full of anger and bitterness and hate. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 21, 22, 29, 22. Turn to Proverbs 29, 22. An angry man stirreth up strife, and a furious man aboundeth in transgression. Okay. What happens when you get angry? It begets more anger, and you can stir up strife with those around you. If you have a family, you can stir up strife with your family. Uh, fellowship with the brethren, you can stir up strife. If you're at work, if you have a job somewhere, you can stir up strife. Anger is not a good thing. It's a good thing 
when it's righteous anger, absolutely, and you're angry with a cause. But there has to be some point where you give it to God. God, you deal with them. The situation here, God, you deal with it. I give it to you, O oh Lord. Mm -hmm. you got to be careful not to hold on to that anger. Especially, especially, and we're going to get to this, when a brethren repents. You're not supposed to hold on to that anger. And I've had problems with that, where I go back over something, well, he apologized for it, and why am I talking about it? It's done, it's over with. He apologized, why am I holding on to it? He repented, why am I holding on to it? And I'm talking about me. When I'm sitting there talking with the Lord, I'll start getting a little, like, start complaining about things and said, what about this, what about that? I'm like, and then the Lord tells me, didn't that person apologize? Didn't they repent? Let it go. Didn't that person confess their fault that they struggle with this in this area? Let it go. Mm -hmm. The word clamor there, it's the only time you'll find it in the King James Bible. It says to utter loud sounds or outcries, to talk loud, to utter loud voices repeatedly, to viscerate as an individual, to utter loud voices as a multitude, to complain, to make impudent, impudent demands, to make demands. Basically when they get to yelling. Okay. Anger can lead to that, definitely. I had it in my life. Okay. Anger can lead to yelling, making demands, acting crazy, verbally. Okay. You gotta be careful about that. You can be angry with the cause. That's okay. You can be angry with the cause. But when you hold on to that anger, it starts to fester and it starts to turn into other things. Be angry and sin not. Okay? That anger can fester and start turning into the, the righteous anger, the anger that's anger with the cause is a good thing, but it can turn into sin real quick. It can turn into sin when you hold on to it forever. Okay, let's get to the last part, forgiving one another. You know what grieves the Holy Spirit too? When you don't forgive your brother or sister in Christ. Now, I had a sister in Christ write to me and say that she had to forgive everybody that hurt her. Chapter and verse where you forgive everybody, period. You won't find it. But hear me out, okay? Turn to Luke chapter 17, verse 3. This is the point I'm trying to make. It says, Take heed to yourselves. If thy brother trespass against thee, that's an if, it's a Bible if, Make sure it's a trespass before you, before you get angry. But if a brother trespass against you, rebuke him. Rebuke him. Okay? The Bible talks about elsewhere that um, before you go to him, your brother to make it, to make it right, thou, and if thou brother has repented, then thou hast gained thy brother. If not, you take two or three witnesses. Then you tell the church, and then if he still refuses to repent, uh, he's to be as a heathen and as a publican. But the first part there, you go to him with love because that's the whole point. The whole goal of you rebuking a brother is to get that fellowship back. Is that your point? Are you going into it trying to start a fight? Are you trying to go into it trying to start an argument? Or are you going into it saying, hey, I want my fellowship with that brother back. Thou hast gained thy brother. Right? If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. What's the next part? And if he repents, there's the Bible condition again. If he repents, it's an if. Forgive him. Matthew 18, 21, here's Peter asking Jesus, how often should I forgive? Matthew 18, 21, then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times? Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. If a brother is trespassed against you, and if he repent, you're to forgive him. You rebuke him, he repents, you forgive him, let it go. Drop the anger, drop the bitterness, let it go. If he doesn't repent, you're not to forgive him. But you're not to hold that anger either. Remember what it said, be angry and sin not. 
If you keep holding on to that anger, it keeps going down further down, saying, okay, at this point, when it comes to the brethren, they've got to come to a point where you let go of that anger and you drop it, give it to the Lord. If you hold on to that anger, it's going to fester. Okay? But the person, the brotherhood and sister of Christ has to repent. If they don't repent, you don't forgive them. You don't hold a grudge. You don't hold bitterness. You don't hold all these things that we talked about there. Evil speaking and stuff like that. Clamor. Wrath. You give it to the Lord. When that person won't repent, you give them to the Lord. If it goes as far as, uh, I forgot what chapter it's in, but if it goes as far as where he has to be treated as a heathen and a publican, you're putting him out of the fellowship. That's like a last, last resort. It shouldn't be the first. And a lot of people like to skip those steps. They just go and try to talk to the person and then kick him out and you're done with. It's like, you didn't follow the steps and the procedures. You didn't do right. You just kicked him right out. That's a last resort. And the whole point of you going to that brother is so you can gain your brother and you don't have to kick him out of the fellowship. That should be your heart's desire. It's not... Some people can fall into the trap of rebuking people because it's fun. I just like rebuking people, rebuking people. I don't care about fellowship with them. I'm not fellowshipping with any of them. I just like rebuking people and calling people out and calling people out left and right. The whole point of correcting a brother in Christ when it gets to a rebuke, you can do a correction, but when it gets to a rebuke is to get that fellowship back. You lost the fellowship, you want that fellowship back. You lost a brother in Christ to some sin or to the world and you want that brother in Christ back. You want that relationship back. That's the whole point. Okay. First John 1 John 1.9 says, 1 John 1.9, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. All unrighteousness. Jesus is faithful to forgive. And the reason I read that is, would we read over in Ephesians 4.32? And be ye kind... Be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. If we come to God repentance, He'll forgive us of our sins. At salvation, and as a saved sinner, day-to-day -day walk with the Lord. He's faithful. Right? We're supposed to be like that. Someone comes to us and truly repents, we're supposed to forgive them, and we're supposed to let it go, and not hold on to it. Okay. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I've seen this, and I pray to the Lord that I will never be, and I have, but I never will again, be the point where I have anger towards a brother that's forgiven me, and not letting it go. I gotta let it go. I gotta give it to the Lord. Okay. And I just want to do a quick short study. I don't know how long it's been. But um, I just want to hit that home saying, hey, you can't hold anger in your heart. You can be angry. We've taught this. Angry with the cause. Angry with the cause. You go to the Bible versions take without a cause out. So it makes Jesus out to be a sinner because he was angry uh, when he threw the money lenders out of the temple and chased them off with whips. And um, he, they make him out to be a sinner, but he was angry with a cause. But did Jesus stay angry? When he was done throwing them all out, what did he do? He sat down and started teaching the people and talking to people with love, with authority, but out of kindness and love, he started teaching the people. He started preaching and teaching in the synagogue. He didn't stay angry, all right? but we never preached that part. The people holding on to that anger. You can be angry with the cause and a person never repents, but there has to be some point where that anger, you got to give it to the Lord. You give them to the Lord and let the Lord deal with them. We read that about the wrath. Give place, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. When it says give place unto wrath, that's God's will take care of it. That's what wrath is. It's God's wrath. He'll take care of it. God will take care of it. Okay? Brother repents, please forgive him. Fellowship is so hard. There's so few of us left that are still standing. And for you to, for anybody just to, because I've made the mistake recently, but for anybody to just hold on to something festering and then use it as an excuse to destroy fellowship with the brethren, 
You gotta learn to let it go, brothers and sisters in Christ. Don't hold on to it, let it go. Now, like I said, one thing I didn't bring up is, is the forgiveness thing. If they repent, if they don't repent, you keep your guard up, you keep your shield up. You don't put yourself out there to be hurt by that person again. But you don't hold on to that anger. You give it to the Lord and you move on. Mm -hmm. What happens when you don't? The person you're going to wind up being really angry at is yourself. If you're truly saved, born again, you're going to be angry at yourself like I am. Mm -hmm. I, I love fellowship and I'm desperate for fellowship. So when I do something stupid that hurts fellowship, I get angry with me, number one person. Okay. And if that it was because of anger that hurt that fellowship, like I said, it's going to come back to you. The number one person you're going to be angry with the most is yourself. The mistakes that you made, losing your temper, the whining and complaining all the time, giving in to sin, making bad choices. I've been there. Mm -hmm. So my encouragement to the brethren is, is you can get angry with the cause, but make sure you're not holding on to that anger. When it comes to the body of Christ, you got to learn to let it go. You got to learn to give it to the Lord and let the Lord deal with it. Mm -hmm. I want to I want to end this with uh, charity. Why? Because when Jesus forgives me, I don't deserve it. When I've wronged a brother in Christ and they forgive me, I didn't deserve it. That person had charity. Okay? It's a blessing. 1 Corinthians 13, 1. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. Verse 3, And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profit me nothing. Has it sinking in yet? The marks of someone who's saved is they're going to have charity. There's times where they fail to have charity, but as a whole, that when they get reminded, they're going to remember, yeah, I'm supposed to have charity. Okay. Verse 4, Charity suffereth long, and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaulteth not itself, it is not puffed up. Doth not behave itself unseemly. When we talk about anger, gets you to behave unseemly. Opposite of anger, charity. Seeketh not her own. It is not easily provoked. Anger is easily provoked. Remember it talks about not being easily provoked, getting angry easily. Shouldn't be something that's easy. Okay, charity is not easily provoked. Thinketh no evil. Be angry, sin not. Uh, let not your wrath, you know, get, get rid of the wrath that you, like wishing harm or bad things to happen to brethren. That thinketh no evil. Six, rejoiceth not in the iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. If the truth brought you to Christ, praise the Lord. If the truth got you back on the right path and your walk with the Lord, praise the Lord. But we're not to celebrate when someone's being punished by God and rubbing it in and, just, and having such joy in other people suffering who reject Jesus Christ, some of the brethren who are doing wrong and bad things are happening to them. We're not supposed to be uh, celebrating. Charity doesn't do that. Verse 7. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Catching away the body of Christ. We're going to be standing for Jesus Christ face to face. 
Now I know in part, but then shall I know, even as I all am known. And now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three. But the greatest of these is charity. Bible versions like to just say love. No, it's charity. Charity means love, but charity means so much more. We just read through there. And charity. Brethren, don't forget that we're supposed to have charity. It's very important in the life of a Christian. When you make a mistake, you can't always beat yourself up. You gotta have charity with yourself. You gotta have charity with the brethren. You gotta have charity sometimes with the lost world, understanding that they're lost. They need Jesus Christ. I know of some people that really get off on trying to tell the lost world how they're supposed to live their life when they need Jesus Christ first. You can tell them that they need to clean this up and they need to clean that up and they need to stop doing this, but without Jesus Christ, it's pointless. They need Jesus Christ. And you got to learn to have some charity in the sense to understand that they're lost. I have neighbors that I have to put up with that are lost. And I have charity for them. I've given them gospel tracts. I've given them the booklet that Brother JT has done about how to be saved and know it. Okay, I think I've almost given everybody in my neighborhood that booklet. Um, but I have lost people around me that I realize they're lost. I can get angry, I can get hate-filled, I can get bitter, and I can want wrath upon them for some of the things they do. Like sometimes I try to sit out on the deck and I hear someone throwing a party and it's just satanic style music and I just have to go inside. Okay? And it's like even being out in the mountainside with a lot of space, uh, sound still travels pretty easy. Because <laughs> uh, I almost got 10 acres and some of the other people have like 15, 20, and it still travels. But I have to have the charity to understand that they're lost. They need Jesus Christ. Okay, charity is very important in the brethren. It's more important than righteous anger. Charity is. Okay. Being angry with the cause, praise the Lord, you have every right to be angry with the cause. But at some point, you've got to give that anger to the Lord. You've got to let it go. If the person repented, you definitely need to let it go. And you need to drop it. And don't let it destroy you. And like I said, the whole point of going to a brother and rebuking him, I was rebuked recently, is to get us back on the right path. I started complaining and whining too much. The whole point of rebuking is to get the person back on the right path. To get them to start acting right, saying right. Uh, there for a while I was so worried about my condition and things that I was going through. I almost was, not almost, I was ignoring what some of the other brethren were going through. That's how bad it was when I was getting kind of depressed and getting low. And I just didn't even pay attention to what the other brethren are going through. That's where charity comes in. you got to keep an eye on what's going on with the brethren. It's not all about you. Yes, you're going through stuff. Yes. You have your walk with the Lord, but there's times you got to realize the other brethren are having a hard time too. The other brethren out there, brothers and sisters of Christ out there, are going through some things too. You're not alone. You're not the only one. Okay. So hopefully this has encouraged you, brothers and sisters in Christ, to uh, you know not hold the anger in and don't let those things happen. Bitterness, uh, yelling, all that stuff, uh, evil speaking. I uh, can't remember if we did evil speaking now. I think we might have skipped it. But the evil speaking, I just put used case just real quick. Evil speaking, 1 Peter 2 1 to 2, and then 1 Peter 4 3, it talks about how we're supposed to put away evil speaking. That's not something a Christian does. And then 1 Peter 4 3 talks about that's something that the lost world does. Evil speaking. There's nothing wrong with going to a brother and having and being angry with the cause. It's not evil speaking. But you don't want to fall in the trap of just backbiting and talking about people and name calling and stuff like that and mocking and stuff like that. Uh, evil speaking. Okay? You don't want to fall into that. And if that was on there, I just couldn't remember if I might have skipped it. So grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching.